And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So the Bible says when he um, descended, he ascended and gave gifts unto men. And now these are the gifts that the Lord has given to his church. And remember, when we talk about the church, like I said earlier, it is not the building. It is the people. You are the church. Are you understanding me? He says Christ is the head of the church and we are his body. So the church cannot be the blocks and the cement and mortar. It is the people. So now he's given to the church these gifts. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And he said it was for a purpose. He gave them for a purpose. Why do you have a pastor? Why do you have an apostle? Why do you have an evangelist? Why do you have a teacher or a prophet in your life? Have you asked yourself these questions? And if you're a minister here, why do you think you are a prophet? Why do you think you are a pastor? And why do you think you're an evangelist or an apostle? Are you living up to that office? He's going to tell us why he gave these offices. Are you with me? Next verse, see what he said. For the perfecting of the saints. So these people, or these gifts that he's given to the church, is for the perfecting. The word is catechismos. It means the finishing, the building, the, 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 of course, the training of the saints. And if you are being trained, you are trained for what? For something. Right? Why are you in school? And even when you get into a job, usually you have to go through orientation. They train you. There's an end goal. Right? And so we see the same thing. He says, these are for the perfecting of the saints. And the saints refer to everyone who is a child of God. Hallelujah. So if you are born again, you are a saint. A saint is no one who is dead and gone to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I'm a, saint. I'm a saint. It's from the word hagios. It means one who is holy, who has been set apart. And that is who we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So the saints are being perfected for the work of the ministry, to be able to do the work of the ministry. And he tells us what the work of the ministry is, the edifying of the body of Christ. Have you been living up to this calling all your life? Or you've ever thought, you know, growing up, you think the church is just where we go to meet. I am going to church. So... Right after that, and that, listen, this is, we'll, we'll go through some history. This is what has affected lots of people, or what has affected our Christianity and theology. Because in our minds, I'm going to church. Like you came here, I'm going to church. So now when I'm done with the church, the pastor is done preaching, and I step out, I'm back to my normal life. You see the problem it has created? But when you know that I'm going as the church, I leave as the church. I am the church anywhere I find myself. Hallelujah. You know the history to that, right? This, this understanding has really worried the church, and it's, 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 it's been a big problem. So the average Christian doesn't even know that they are the church. To so them, we are going to church. So we are going to have some form of activity, and after that, go back home, and then live a normal life. So the consciousness of, you know, they being the church is not there. That's how come you come to church and you put up a front. Then the moment you step out, if someone was, you said, and eh, you know that, made the Christo soon better, hona machel say, your woman, em, mokwada, your friend me, kuiku, your friend me, ekuya. Hallelujah. For the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the work of the ministry is the edifying of the body of Christ, to build up the body of Christ. And each and every one of us has that role to play. Are you understanding me? Let's, before we continue, let's go back to um, verse, verse 6 and 7 of the same chapter. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, uh-huh, 
But unto every one of us, can you all read it? One, two, three, go. Uh huh. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. For something, every one of us. So it is not just those at the pulpit. It is not just those that are sort of doing what we call ministry. It is for you the moment you became born again. Grace has been given unto you according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What are you using it for? What are you using it for? Back to 12. So he says, when we build up, as we are building up the body of Christ, it's to an end. See what he says next. Until or till we all come. Hallelujah. In the unity of the faith. This is very important. Until we all come in the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. You see, when you look at it this way, he tells us that the only way that we'll be able to achieve this unity is when we have the accurate knowledge of the Son of God. The word end is a copulative conjunction. It is not one that is really separating the knowledge of the Son of God from the, so we all come into the unity of, so it says, so we all come into the unity of the faith, which also. So it means that the unity of the faith is we all come in to believe the same thing of who Jesus really is. Not some believe he is this, others believe he is that. We'll get into all that. Hallelujah. The knowledge of the Son of God, the word is epignosis. It is accurate, exact, precise knowledge. Something that, oh, we cannot really have the exact and accurate knowledge of Jesus. If it wasn't possible, why would he put it there? Why would he put it there if it wasn't possible? And that word, epignosis, beyond being an exact knowledge or accurate knowledge, is a kind of knowledge where the knower can relate with what is known. So it's not just, oh, I know this about Jesus. You are actually experiencing that knowledge. That's what he's saying. And then he says, Onto a perfect man. So that's why we have this onto a perfect man conference. What does it mean? The word is teleos, which actually means onto a mature man. So there's maturity for us. After you get born again, you have to grow. Are you with me? Say there's maturity for me. Say it again. There's maturity for me. So unto a perfect man. Then he tells us, unto the measure, matron, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It means that Christ is the standard of measurement when it comes to our Christian maturity. How do you describe someone as a mature Christian? Because they prophesy? Because they heal the sick? Or because they do some sort of activities? He says, when we are talking about the measurement of our maturity, it is by one man, one standard, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, you measure your growth by the Lord, but how would you be able to measure it if you don't have the accurate knowledge? You see how important it is? Are you with me? 
So he says, all these gifts that he has given to the church is to build a saint so that we get to this point, the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the end goal. That will be exactly like Jesus, even as we are. Exactly like him in, his ex- in our expressions. We are expressing him fully, not short of. I remember years ago, you know, at the time, the message had not really been in my heart like that. I was in my teenage days. And the Lord said to me, the ministry that I'm calling you to do, the least person in your ministry will do what Jesus did. At the time, I didn't even understand it. When I heard those words, I wrote it down. And I was wondering, what does this really mean? Now I understand. Now I understand. So it puts some sort of responsibility on me as the pastor. Because the Lord has said the least person in the commission that I've called you into should do what Jesus did. That's why for some of you, um, the way I am on you, eh? don't don't be offended. It's for your growth. Give the Lord a mighty clap of him. It's for your growth. Don't be offended. Sometimes it's like, pasta is a bit, it's hard. Pasta is, is, I'm one of the most loving people you'd ever meet. How many of you believe that? Yeah. Loving. Hallelujah. So, how could we get to this point if we don't have the right knowledge? And this is something that lots of people like to skip. They they don't even read it. And he tells us that if we're able to achieve this, see what he said next. It will be impossible. Next. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro by any wind and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and the cunning craftiness when they lie in wait to deceive. He says, when we achieve that, it will be impossible to be deceived. I cannot be deceived. deceived. Tell yourself. You know, sometimes, I'm sorry, I'll buy the, oh, I'm sorry, I'll throw him, say, baby, I'll come on, eh, 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 genuine, and I say, I'm going to be fake, and I say, do you have the Holy Ghost? You see, and I, you see, that is so important. When I hear people talk like that, and I know that they are babes, because a mature person will not struggle to know a church or an assembly that is in the will of the Father. Sometimes we just want to be condescending and say that, oh, everyone has been called to have their message, leave them their message. All the apostles had a specific assignment, but one message. They were called to different, uh, what's the word? Um, Different audience, but the message was the same. So let us let us be and stop priding ourselves because you want to teach some form of revelation. We've been called to do something. Please. Hallelujah. Amen. Our audience may not be the same, but the centrality of our message should never be diluted. Do you understand that? It shouldn't be. It's very easy to preach anything outside Jesus. Very easy. And over the years, it's been happening. And so we have branded businessmen at the pulpits. We have branded doctors at the pulpits. And so now the message that is supposed to be about one person, who is Jesus Christ, is now being... I was talking to one of my sons the other time, and I was saying that there, are the, there is the main thing and there are the extras. But... Because of our laziness, we've brought the extras to be the main thing. And then we've left the main thing down. Because for, the, for you to teach the main thing, you have to sit your bottles down and steady. And the thing is that because people are not really steady in the scriptures and all, they are in love with the extras. So if I came here right now and I'm come to give you 10 ways to become the next billionaire. Nice. You see how if you've just responded. But everything I say, you're just looking at me. Mm. That's, what, that's what you want to hear. How 
you can break into the spirit with a new that you see you want to hear things like that 20 ways to break the hold of poverty so these things come in and listen they are a great distraction the devil will not maybe want you to do something like you know even sin but he'll just distract you with the extras sometimes we come and just want to teach business principles at the pulpit that is not what the pulpit is for that's not what it is he says for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry if you are teaching what can be studied in school get it get off get off the pulpit and go and enroll or send your application to be a lecturer or a teacher Because, because it's, it's high time we stop joking in the name of I'm um, doing something and just because you've, you've branded a church. Do you know what the church is? And do you know they are God's people? Do you know you give account of what you teach them? And you're also responsible for the knowledge you receive. Don't sit in a service blockheaded. The Bible says the people of Beria were noble they went out and searched the scriptures to know whether what paul paul cry apostle paul teaching crown crown for conscience and your kind of young partner now yeah yeah preacher now you're now a quota you go and sleep i've told you even if i said it and you know through the scriptures that it's not right. Don't take it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, he says, if that happens, it will be impossible to be deceived. All the deceptions going around in the body of Christ is because we lack the true knowledge of who Jesus is.